Open circuit normally means the pump suction line is below the fluid level in the reservoir and the reservoir is open to atmospheric pressure. In most open circuits, hydraulic fluid is fed to the prime mover via directional control valve and returned to the reservoir in the same way. This first circuit is a basic system with a hydraulic pump and a hydraulic motor. When the pump is in operation, flow is directed to the hydraulic motor giving it rotation. If the pump is not rotating, the hydraulic motor will not turn. In this circuit, a directional control valve is added to the circuit and the hydraulic motor is replaced by a bi-directional hydraulic motor. The directional control valve will allow the hydraulic motor to reverse direction when shifted. This circuit adds an adjustable flow control valve and a pressure relief valve. The flow control valve allows for variable output speeds from the hydraulic motor. The pressure relief valve protects the system from overpressurization and will shift as the system pressure increases due to flow restriction in the flow control valve. In the last circuit, the fixed pump has been replaced by a variable pump. The flow control valve is removed, an open center directional control valve is added, and a filter and heat exchanger are added to the return line. The directional control valves allow for freewheeling of the hydraulic motor when centered, and reverse direction when shifted. The filter and heat exchanger will condition the fluid before it enters the reservoir. The variable pump will now allow for variable output speeds from the hydraulic motor. When the hydraulic motor rotation is restricted or stopped, the high pressure relief valve opens and protects the system from overpressurization. A closed circuit normally means the hydraulic fluid is returned from the prime mover directly back to the inlet of the pump. In most closed circuits, the continuous leakage from the pump and motor is replenished by an auxiliary pump. This first circuit is a basic system with a bi-directional variable displacement piston pump and a bi-directional hydraulic motor. When the pump is on, stroke flow is directed to the hydraulic motor giving it rotation. Rotation of the hydraulic motor is reversed when the piston pump swash plate goes over center. Controlling the output speed from the hydraulic motor is achieved by varying the output flow from the variable piston pump. If the pump is not rotating or is off stroke, the hydraulic motor will not turn. In this circuit, two pressure relief valves are added to protect the system from overpressurization. When the hydraulic motor rotation is restricted or stopped, the high pressure relief valve opens and protects the system from overpressurization. This circuit adds a small tank to hold the leakage from the pump and hydraulic motor. This leakage must be replenished to the closed circuit. In the last circuit, a fixed pump is added with a filter in the suction line, two spring check valves and a charge pressure relief valve are added, and a heat exchanger is added to the leakage line from the pump and hydraulic motor. The fixed pump replenishes the hydraulic fluid that is lost from internal leakage from the pump and motor through the spring check valve into the low boot pressure line. The other check valve keeps the high system pressure isolated from the low boost pressure. When the auxiliary pump has replenished the low boot side, pressure builds slightly, opening the charge pressure relief valve. The charge pressure relief valve opens and fluid is directed back to the tank. The charge pressure relief valve maintains a constant pressure in the low boot pressure line, which charges the pump. When the hydraulic motor rotation is restricted or stopped, the high pressure relief valve opens and protects the system from overpressurization.